We left off 166. Okay, we're in the middle of this allegory in terms of what is the equivalent of our existence in this world. A person comes to a strange land, he has no relevance there, knows no one, and the king says to him, you're welcome to come to our land, we will treat you well as long as you abide by the laws of the land. We'll provide you with certain amenities if you, if you keep the laws of the land. But if you should violate the laws, you're going to be punished seriously. You're only here as long as we allow you to be here. But the moment we ask you to leave, instantaneously, immediately, without any notice, you must leave. Then he explained, you meet a person similar to yourself. You should help him just as you were helped. You should help this stranger who has no one to help him. Umihem, rolling the... Um, third paragraph from the bottom he should immediately he should hasten he says to devote himself to serve the master of the of the city because no one will will take pity on him if he falls short of his service the person can't make ends meet and you have someone who's, who has a positive feeling towards you. That person will come to help you. A stranger, why should he help you? So if the master knows that you've done your best, you're devoted to him, and for some whatever reason is, you still need help, he will help you. Of course, you've shown your devotion to, to the master, to the, to the king. Of course, the issue is just to the contrary what the tsunamis had said, the Ishi Shunami, she was, she was childless. And she said to, Elisha said to her, that, what, what would you want I should do? Would you want me to speak to the king? Should I speak to the king? Should I speak to the general? I don't want you to ask on my behalf. I sit among my, my people. I'm an ordinary citizen. I don't want to be singled out to be treated specially. That's what she said to him. But that's what it means. What does it mean? Kloma. In other words, what did she say? It's not necessary for you to intervene on my behalf. My Why? Why? Eid, I have sufficient family connections. My family will speak on my behalf. It's not necessary for you to intervene on my behalf. That's what she said to me. It means much more than that. We'll discuss it in a moment. They know Cain. You know, what about a person's a stranger? He doesn't have family to speak on his behalf or friends to intervene on it. So, he's actually, he's, not in, he's, in, he's in need. A person who's needy and nobody notices his need, he has a problem. So what does that person have to, do, have to do? He has to endear himself to the people, to the person who could help him. How do you endear yourself? To show that you revere him, you esteem that person. You're devoted to that person. So if you're showing all that endearment and value, when you're in need, that person will come to your aid to accommodate what you need is. What did David say? David was in a, with a serious plight. Wherever he turned, he only had enemies, David. He had nowhere to turn. And he asked for Hashem to help him, to protect him. There's no location that I could, there's no refuge left where I could flee to for protection. No one's interested in my existence, whether I live or die. Therefore, he says to Hashem, help me. Yeah, also the people who are content with what they have. They find a residence or clothing. 
that he conducts his life in a way where he only applies himself to the degree of necessity not to burden himself overwork himself to achieve something which is not necessary the question is what, what's necessity you know the Mrs. Shum writes that if you look at, at your life in terms of um, most things we want we feel we need are really excesses it's excess let's see a person would be in a situation changes of arm go elsewhere and it's a question of survival what would he be what would be sufficient for bed, clothing to cover by his hunger that would be sufficient and warmth and you'd be very happy because knowing if, if you have that you're able to continue to live and to be productive fully productive but change the scenario to where you can have more all of a sudden that's less than you need but what determines need what, what I think I'm deserving of what I think I'm entitled to have so that sense of what I feel I deserve or it's beneath my dignity to have less that creates all the problems in life so it's really it's a societal issue whatever society sets a standard if you're less than that that means you feel you're less than someone else so therefore automatically that raises the bar that becomes necessity but if you live in a society where the bar is a lot less so you may want more but you realize when you have more that's that's excess today we said we live in an affluent society and because I'm part of the society I'm not an illegal alien therefore I have a right to have more sure if you're an illegal alien you know they used to call them the wetbacks today they come they fly in first class they're not wetbacks because they have they, the person who hires them they send them a first class ticket okay but at one time so what does he expect he's happy if they, they don't catch him because they'll deport him so as long as he's able to live a little more than a than a rat in a, in a sewer he's okay but the average citizen a citizen I should live this way or even more than that way that's that subhuman so how do you set everything what's what's the perception of what it should be what should not be whatever standard society sets to be continued to